Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. To another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson your mindfulness coach and soon to be master practitioner in psychology and going back to school to get my master's in psychology. So I'm super excited about everything that's happening. And this has been a wonderful week. What I'm enjoying right now with everything is the fact that I can work from home. I mean, a lot of people, I think in last year during when the pandemic first happened, disregarded working from home. They thought, why? And, and for some people, it was that space so say if you had a family and uh, you wanted to, you know, drop the kids off at school at eight, go to work by nine, off by five, then dinner at home, you kind of get that kind of separation versus now when you work from home, if you have kids, they have school, everything's blended together. So there really is no separation whatsoever. So with me recently, um, it's called Lyra, L-Y-R-A. I signed up as a contract wellness coach, which is super cool for me. I really enjoy uh, coaching a few clients I've coached. Um, and everything's pretty much through Zoom. You know, they have their own portal they use, but through Zoom. And I'm getting so much more experience. Um, from when I first signed up and coached my first client three days ago, it was like, I, this is where I'm supposed to be. I knew mm-hmm. it right away in my heart. This is where I'm supposed to be. And the flexibility of managing my own schedule uh, means that when I want to work, I work. When I don't, I don't. I just have to work at least 10 hours a week minimum. But more importantly, what I'm realizing is uh, wellness coaching um, needs to one, I wish to be regulated, it means that we all have licenses and, and all that kind of stuff and certifications. We're in this, hey, we hope someone took some training in this program. I, you know, I hope they're certified. Uh, at least when you're uh, working for a company, they go through all those regulations and all that stuff. But I think overall coaching should be regulated. I mean, it, should, it gives more opportunities for people to actually get help they need. Not everybody needs a um, psychiatrist. Not everybody needs a therapist. Someone just needs someone to listen to them and help them focus on their goals. That's what it really is. Life is about, I want to achieve outcome. So you have an outcome in your life you want to achieve. But you realize mindsets of, uh, I'm so worried what may go wrong, or you're so overcome with stress, or you can't know, don't know where to start, or you just you know what's well, been a long week. Must want to listen to you and give some structure what's happening. Give you better insight, right? Because life is really just multidimensional. It's not straight line. And we all wish it was. And we know A equals B, B equals C means we know if we do certain steps, it's going to equal X outcome. But it really doesn't. And I think it should be where people really need to get the, the mental health. So mental health well-being is different than mental health. So mental health well-being encompasses, sorry, entangles your physical health entangles your mental health. Mental health is really just about people that have really some mental disabilities as far as our, if they're a sociopath, psychopath, narcissist, um, bipolar disorder. They have massive uh, depression, anxiety. Those people that need some help with a therapist or psychologist, but most people just need help navigating life because it is it can be very difficult at times. So that's my take on that. And the fact that, you know, I'm helping out some, so many more people. 
this allows me an opportunity to go back to school, get my master's, because obviously I have to get my bachelor's first, but I'm saying master's because that's the outcome I'm going to achieve is the master's in psychology. Because then now I'm regulated, I'm certified, I have my licenses all, all there and ready to go. So I can go to a totally different level and I learn more about human behaviors. And that's the whole point of getting my master's is I want to learn and understand human behaviors. And because I love learning. So I'm using my character strength to my own personal advantage. That's kind of the That's update cool. for uh, this uh, freestyle. <laughs> I, I didn't mention it before, but this is a freestyle. And this is the update. This is what's happening. What's going on? Yeah, about you, Gloria? Congratulations. Just another congratulations for you. I like how that, um, you you know, this just validated even more to you or for you that this is exactly where you should be. Mm. You know, um, that just another validation for you that you are doing exactly what you want to do or that you love to do. Sometimes we need that, like some kind of validation or clar- clarification, you know, um, and, and that feels it just. It's a wonderful feeling to feel that. And thank you again, because I felt so good. And that's what coaching is really about. What you just did to me, I mean, we're both coaches. It's just validating. Hey. And and obviously a step further for us is where it's where we should be. Mm-hmm. Most people don't think that they should be somewhere else, but it's really the current steps they're taking to get to the next step. You know, I saw this picture, a meme on uh, Instagram, and it's a picture of a guy obviously like a cartoon drawing and it's two ladders. Let's say the first ladder has every inch as a step, right? As a way to the top. The second ladder has the first step, but then the second step is 10 feet higher. So the first ladder, every there's a step every inch to get to the top. The ladder, there's first step, the next step is 10 feet up. So the process is this. So you can't go from one inch to 10 feet. That's not how it really works. You have to go step by step. You know, if you try to jump steps, you may trip, you may fall, you're going to stumble. But if you have at least these small uh, steps along the way, a difference in a staircase, you're definitely working your way up to the top. Now, the top may be, you know, 40 steps or 50 steps or 1,000 steps, but it's the first two or three steps that get you to the fourth to the fifth. You can't jump from step one to step 20. If you try to jump, you're going to fall, you're going to trip, something's going to happen. So how you validated this is where I should be, it is exactly where I should be. Mm-hmm. And I'm confident yeah. this is exactly where I want to be. And that's where I should be, but where I want to be. And I'm confident the steps I'm taking, we're going to do a couple of different things. Uh, like I said, I mentioned earlier, let me go back to school. But at the same time in coaching, we can get levels of certification from ICF, International Coaching Federation. So my first one now is ACC, so it stands for Associate Coach Certification. Uh, the next one up with PC, PCC, Professional Coach Certification. So I'm going to go using these hours to get my PCC. And, you know, I think after that, I think it's 2,500 hours for MCC. And you know, I've already spent 2,500 hours going and getting my degree than 25 hours of coaching because, like I said, it's not regulated. You can't use your insurance. And and it's so over uh, convoluted sometimes with so many coaches that, you know, have done the work and that haven't done the work. It makes it hard for people to make decisions. But, it, and it's also for you, you know, it's a, it's an achievement, right. And, and having to fulfill those and achieve that, it's just, um, again, it's, it's this feeling that you get out of that, that, you know, you've worked hard for it and you, because it's something that you want to do. You, you just following the energy. That's what's happening here. The word is called hilotrophic. Hmm. I want to yeah. explain what that is. <laughs> First to spell H E L I T R O P H I C Hilotrophic. I if I spell it wrong, I apologize. Um, so the easy way to explain that if you t- take a flower, you put it on a windowsill, and if the sun is faced to the east, no matter what happens, the flower will flow that direction because it needs photosynthesis, it needs sun or sunlight, right? And we all have seen trees, you see, you know, flowers, they face a direction where the sun is. So basically the way to explain it is we go where energy flows. It's called a helotrophic mm-hmm. effect. Mm-hmm. You just go where energy flows. So if energy is flowing to do this contract with Lyra and work with clients and getting my uh, experience and certifications and going back to school, the energy is flowing there. Not, not just that. And it, it doesn't have to be just, you know, big things like going back to school or, um, getting this contract job, it's small things. The books I'm reading, what I Google online. It's just, 
<clears throat> people to interact just, with. Yeah. It, and to me also that it's just doing what you love to do and just following it. And it's God, I had that just recently too. It's just basically following and flowing with, but not against your purpose. Just standing up for what you believe in, mm. leaning on your faith, you know, just all that was coming up for me this, this week. And just like you, like, I, I felt like, gosh, it's another validation that I am where I need to be. I am where I should be. And this is what I love to do. So I'm just really just like, we're, you know, we're talking about following energy. Right. And I think um, I posted this thing on my Instagram. Um, was it yesterday? I think it, yeah, it was yesterday about just, you know, we were all thinking to myself, gosh, ah, we were all born with wings. We need to use it and spread, spread our wings and fly. Mm. I, I saw something about like flying, you know, because the sky's the limit. But for me, there's really, there shouldn't be any limit. You shouldn't limit yourself. Mm. You know what, when you think about that in context, you know, most of, most of us walk around with, you know what the definition of clip wings are? Have you heard the definition before? Mm -mm. So what happens if you buy a bird, I see one of those expensive, um, I don't know, talking birds, cantu birds, whatever the name is. You guys can Google it out there. But what you do is you clip their wings because if you open the cage, you'll fly away. Clipping their wings means you clip a certain part of the wings so they can't fly. They can flap, right? So they're still okay, but they can't fly and get air. So most of us walk around with clipped wings. Most of us walk around, though we know that we can probably do a lot of different things, but the thoughts we go through our mind become no difference than a bird with clipped wings that's caged so it doesn't fly away just think about if you go to the zoo right you see those um uh what do you call them the, the pink ones um shoot flamingos they're open in open air right but the wings yeah. are clipped so they can't fly away mm -hmm. so if you've been in the zoo or a place where that birds and it's open they, they clip their wings so they don't fly so we gotta learn you know when you set the word purpose you know I just got aware of new information just 24 hours ago. I'm taking this program on positive psychology. And we all think purpose is an even line. So let's say, this is probably a bad example, but it's a good metaphor for me. You know, when someone's heart stops beating, the machine goes flat, right? Flat lines. We probably heard flatlining. And that's not really what purpose is. Purpose is not you find something and everything flat lines out. You stop, having flat yeah. you, there you go. You got the rhyme going. It doesn't stop. Meaning really is just adapting to something new and constantly up leveling yourself to the next thing. So it could be education. It could be new experiences. It can be different environments. It's going to the next level because you want to constantly keep growing up and down just like a heartbeat does on a heart monitoring machine. Beep, 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 beep. It's constantly just going up and down. No difference in your pulse. And that's what meaning really is. And when you said that, it made me think of the meaning, what it really means, and also the bird about the wings, right? You don't want to walk around clip wings in your life. No, you don't. And you talk about bird. Well, I'd prefer to call myself like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> I like butterflies because they're very colorful. I like different colored butterflies just to look at. They're pretty. So that's what I was, where I was going out with this wings, because then, you know, I, I saw this drawing of wings and I just had that one of the girls take a picture of me. And I thought this was perfect because this is, this week is what came up for me is that, you know, we talk about following that energy and then there's that validation. And then thinking, man, I'm just really, I felt like I'm spreading my wings and I'm just going to fly and just keep flying to where this path is going to take me. I'm not setting something where, oh, I need to be there because whatever, right? But it's more like I'm just really following it. Where is the wind going to take me? Where, what's that path? And I don't want to set a limit because I always hear, you know, sky's the limit, sky's the limit. Yes, that's a saying that we hear all the time. But let's just say I reach that, right? Well, I don't, do I want to stop? I've realized I'm that kind of person that never stops. So once I get going, I keep going. There's it's something always comes up for me, one after the other. So there's um that's where I'm at, and that I've just recently had given this advice is that 
you know, um, and I was talking to my cousin about it too, is that you really have to, um, sometimes you have to go after your dreams to make them come true. Otherwise, they're just going to be a dream that's been in your mind and you'll never know unless you go after it. And taking that step forward is the biggest thing too. You know, once you take that one step forward, oh my God, you'll be happy. You'll be glad that you did. You know, listening to you about that is, and the word dreams, what does it really mean? Is it something I, I wake up from a nightmare because I'm thinking of all the things that can go wrong? Is a dream something that's flourishing and, and gratifying, and happy, fulfilling? What is it really a dream? Is a dream an adversity we really we overcome and conquered? You know, we, we really don't talk about what is a dream. We talk about, obviously, when you go to bed, you, you wake up uh, from sleep and, oh, wow, I had this dream last night. But in a different context, we don't think about awake dreams. What I mean by awake dreams is when we awake, what do we think about? Do we think about vacation? Do we think about travel? Do we think about overcoming adversity? Do we think about new challenges we're going to face? But dreams can be whatever you want. And if we're constantly awake and dreaming, are we dreaming about things that can go well versus things that can go wrong? Like inherently, we always want to think about what can go wrong instead of what can go right. So if we dream about things that are going right, we actually achieve those. And do we even want things to go right? What if we're just complacent where we are right now? And that can be okay too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's really when it comes down to dreaming. Is is what do we dream about? Do you dream about the stars. Do you dream about living in a bigger house. Do you dream about uh, having a family. Do you dream about having more wealth or financial freedom, more investments, edu you know, education? This can go on and on. What do we really dream about and what do we really want? That's the biggest answer in life is, um, the biggest answer in life is why are we here? What are we here for and why are we here? Like, What's our meaning and our purpose in the life we're having right now? Why are we here? Why do you think you're here, Gloria? <sighs> Everyone's here for a reason, right? So I know I'm here for a reason. And there's a part of me knowing that why am I here? Um, there's a part of me that knows that I think I've realized and discovered that purpose of the reason why I'm here. Like why God put me in this world? Why, why am I here alive and surviving? And I know what my heart tells me that after all this, this self-discovery that I've had and all this work that I've, I've done and the life coaching and the training where I've really done a lot of, um, work and, um, and going back to self-discovery is that I go back to the purpose and what I feel why I'm here is to help and make an impact make a difference in the world. So you're looking the, um, at... Ray, Ray calls me <laughs> the next Mother Teresa. <laughs> and I keep laughing about it because I always tell her and always remind her sometimes, I'm nowhere like Mother Teresa. But she did say, you know what? That doesn't mean that, you know, we look at Mother Teresa because she's she's perfect, right? That doesn't mean like you you have you're a mother Teresa like a perfect mother Teresa. There's nobody's perfect, which is true. Nobody here is perfect. There's I don't. There's no human being that's perfect. Okay, we all have made mistakes. We all have sins or sinned, and you know. But there was a a, a way that she was explaining that and how she sees me as that. And I was just like God. You know that just made so much sense. And I think that's what I'm feeling. And I think where I'm going at this, where I'm at and just following this energy. And um, I feel like a part of me feels that that's where I, uh, that's why I'm here. The reason why I'm here is to make an impact, make a difference. And, uh, and the best thing about that um, is it, it validated what you already knew. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Maybe the description of Mother Teresa, maybe, oh, I, don't, I, I can't be her. I mean, this person's a legend. This person's a star. This person's done so many wonderful things. But it validated that maybe in in a closer con- context, you share similar, um, um, how can I say this, similar entities or similar um, similarities in Mother Teresa. That's what I was looking for, similarities in Mother Teresa. And that's what the description was. And now you feel like, wow, I got the superpower of mine being like Mother Teresa, whatever that is for you and, and, and how you feel. And now you're going to pursue that all the way. I do. And I, I know that I'm not just going to make a difference here. That made me feel like I know, and I feel it that I'm going to make a difference in the world. Mm. And when I said that, it was like, you know, you already are. You're already making a difference. You, go, you know what? Yeah, you're right. The podcast is one. <laughs> We're already making a difference in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's the only, I would say this, that's what we all suffer from is that I'm going to make a difference in the world. And we, we always think about this grandiose um, idea. I and mean, that's, that's fine. It's a dream, right? But we are already making small steps. Like the latter example I gave earlier, you're already making small steps, the podcast, uh, your YouTube, um, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, things you're reading, things you're posting, things you're engaging with, the people around you, you're already making an impact. But we, 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 we wait for something big to validate what we are already. And instead of just admiring what we have, mm-hmm. knowing that these are what needs to happen in order to get to that bigger dream. Right, you can't go from one inch to ten feet without having small steps along the way. Exactly. So it's already here. We've, we're already doing it. We're building it. I want to say this. This is where you say to yourself, "I have arrived." I feel <laughs> at this point, I have arrived. I'm where I should be. You feel you have arrived and where you should be. Mm-hmm. And I'm super excited to know mm-hmm. I've arrived. Yeah, Everything I've been doing, excited. going through and learning and adapting and changing with myself is has preparing for these moments. So everything you're going through yourself or those out there listening are preparing for those moments. And I can't wait till I get um, you know more education on, in uh, psychology is that why in a human experience, we have to only experience difficult things to, to get flourishing events. Like why do I got to go through a traumatic event to be happy or to find meaning. Does that really exist? So once I figure that out, I will show you guys, I will write a book on that, yeah. an article on that, because I want to know why we have to go through these difficult things to experience more happiness out of life. I don't, I don't think we have to. I no, really don't. No, you don't have to. I, I it, But yeah, it, it's just trying to figure that out. And it's funny because you talk about psychology. I, I'm trying to pick my my father's brain on this now knowing that he was a psychologist, um, college professor. Right. And going back to the history of like what his experience, you know, um, in life and just being out there, he's, this guy's freaking made a difference. He's making an impact. Like just, let's say just in the Philippines alone, you know, when he was growing up. So he's always been just following what he really loves to do and doing what he loves to do. And to these days, he's like, and I'm thinking, I thought you're retired. Why are you doing this? Like, you know, I want to do this. So he's doing something different. And I kind of pick his brain on this things too, because it is something that, that interests me a lot. And so that's, I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't like to say this, but in some ways now I see myself in him. Do you know what I mean? Like now I'm realizing, man, you know, <laughs> this is this is so funny because I feel like I am um, somewhat like a mirror image of him. This is where it's all coming from. Everything's all coming together. Yeah. And Perfectly. by the way, um, the, the, um, the documentary that I think I, um, I think I mentioned it to you. It's a very, very good um, three. It's called three identical strangers. There's a twist to that. Um, so I, anyone here listening, I recommend and highly recommend that. Um, it's a very interesting documentary. And I found it on Amazon, um, Amazon Prime. So if you have a chance or if you have some time, um, check it out. And it's not just about 
there's three um, of the triplets, strangers finding each other later on. There's, I think you'll find it interesting. I mean, when you talk about psychology and science, check it out. I will. They're three identical strangers. I, that sounds very interesting and right on a true documentary. Something that really yeah. happened. It really did happen. And it, the funny thing, it was just very interesting because it really caught me in the middle of it where I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, where's this going? Then that's where the twist is and the interesting part of, the, of that. It started a very, it, it had a very happy um, start, but I don't want to go into details into that. So yeah. <laughs> Leave it where it is, right? We all got to watch it. Anyways, yeah. So anyway, um, you know, this had been very interesting and uh, kind of like a good way to catch up to um, with our week and catch up with our audience. Just keep them posted to where we where we're at. I know it's been a really busy um, month or the past couple of months um, for all of us, for a lot of us. Um, and you know, having the um, this freestyle, the podcast is where I, sometimes we have. Well, we kind of just let things out, right? And that's all about coaching too. You know, it's just let, let things out. Unbox your problems because the box is only so big. So you are only so much you can handle. There's only so much you can take in at once. We're just talking about it. Good, bad, right or wrong, happy, sad, dramatic, whatever it may be. You got to let some of those boxes, problems go in your box so that we can make room for something else. It can't only, can only fill up so much. And that's why we have these freestyles. Catch up with you guys out there and tell you what's going on in our lives, that we are human, you know, we are having these experiences and you maybe have the same experiences too and how we navigate them, how we look at life in a different perspective because because life is really multidimensional. It's not one specific way to life. It, it is multidimensional. And most of us think life is just straight. So I want to say thank you again for listening to another Life's a Shuffle, freestyle, catching up. I hope everybody out there is being safe, having a wonderful time with everything opening up. If you're getting out there and traveling and just if you want to be a special guest, don't hesitate to send us an email at lifesashuffle.com or join our group, you know, at on Facebook at Life's a Shuffle. So we can always talk, connect and, and become a guest and share your story because we're all about sharing stories and connecting at a deeper emotional level and just, just the surface stuff. So again, this is Ron Johnson your life coach, mental coach, and positive psychology practitioner. Yes, and again, um, again, Ron, congratulations on um, the accomplishments that you're achieving right now. And I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you're happy and that you feel, you know, this is where you should be. Um, again, um, yeah, send us an email and um, check us out on Facebook as well. This is Gloria, your mindfulness coach, and thank you for listening to another episode of Life's Shuffle.